After working with Windows storage spaces for about the last 10 years, I think I finally found a configuration on newer versions of Windows that allows Parity to be a usable storage solution for large amounts of data with reasonable write speeds. A lot of the times by default, you might see speeds of like 40 or 80 megabytes per second. And I'd say that's way too slow to be usable in many use cases. But with these tweaks, I was getting 300 megabytes per second or sometimes more which I believe is plenty for something like a media server, backups, or something like that, where you want to get the most out of your disk space, but it still has reasonable performance, especially in sequential tasks. So how can you get this better performance? The big key is the NTFS cluster size and how it relates to the parity data under the hood. By default, the NTFS cluster size is set to four kilobytes. Setting it to a much larger value, like 256, 512, or 1024 kilobytes will significantly lower the overhead and improve performance. There is a most optimal value for your array though that will get the best performance, and that is determined by the interleave size multiplied by the amount of data disks. You can find this optimal number on a virtual disk by finding the number of columns or whatever it's set to, and then subtracting the number of parity drives you have. So if it's small, it's probably a single parity, but if it's larger, you can set it to dual parity. So for example, if you had five columns, it's single parity, so you subtract one, so it means those four data drives essentially, and the default interleave size is 256 kilobytes, and you multiply it by four, so the most optimal cluster size is 1024 kilobytes, and that will get you significantly better write performance in storage spaces. Now that I've gone over what the trick to get better performance is, I'm gonna show you how to do it in Windows 10 without touching PowerShell or any other command line tools. First thing I'm going to do is open storage spaces in control panel and click on create a new storage space. So it's going to click on yes. And then I'm going to see my three disks that I have. I have three two terabyte hard drives, all of which are the same drive and don't have any data. So I can just click on create pool and then I have a new pool. I can call the name of this virtual disk whatever I want. So I'm going to call it parity. I'm going to set the drive letter to some weird value because why not? I'm gonna set it to parity here, which will give me four terabytes. And essentially what's happening here is I have number of columns set to three, so one parity and two data values. By default, the interleave size is 512 kilobytes, and that's what I'm gonna to wanna to set my NTFS cluster size to. But I actually can't do that in here, unfortunately. I have to do that in disk management after. I'm going to see my new four terabyte virtual disk, and then I'm gonna click on format, I can keep the name and the file system the same, and I want to change the allocation unit from default, which is four kilobytes, so 4096, all the way up to 512K. And then I'm going to click OK. It's going to say it's erasing all data. It's going to reformat it, and now it's set up correctly. So let's do a little speed test with it. I have an SSD here with some large files, like video files that I can copy, and then I have my new four terabyte parity. I'm going to copy and paste it, and it's sitting at about 420, but that's probably just writing to RAM right now. Let's take a look at Task Manager to see what's happening with this disk. And yeah, it's reading at, writing at 300, 350 megabytes per second. That's very good performance and about what I'd expect for a three disk parity setup. And it will write at these speeds for the whole duration of the disk. But let's say you wanna work with PowerShell and mess with the interleave size and number of columns. And this makes sure that you actually get the values you want because you cannot change those in the GUI in Windows 10 or Windows Server. The only way to change interleave size and number of columns is through PowerShell. So we can find out a bit of information by doing git dash storage pool. And that's gonna tell me the storage pools on this system. So the storage pool is just a group of disks that you're gonna make virtual disks on. So I see that storage pool one that's there that's what Microsoft made when I did it through that utility in Windows 10. Now I'm gonna say get virtual disk, and that's gonna list the virtual disks that it made. So it's gonna be called parity. Now I wanna make some changes and you can't really make changes to a virtual disk, all you can do is remove it. So I'm just gonna pipe whatever virtual disks I have into remove virtual disk and it's going to delete the virtual disks that I have now. So now it's time to create a new virtual disk. So I can say new virtual disk, and I'm gonna have to put in a few parameters now. So I can put storage pool friendly name in here, and that's gonna be the name up here, under friendly name, under git storage pool. Paste that down there, put it in quotes. Friendly name is what I wanna call my new one, so I'll just call it parity. Um, and then I'm gonna use use maximum size, and that's gonna make it the biggest possible space that it can. 
And then resiliency setting name is parity, so it uses parity. And then number of columns is going to be set to three. You have to have the number of disks equivalent or more than the number of columns you want to set it to. And the other thing I'm going to note is the NTFS cluster size is always a power of two. So pretty much you either want to have three drives in a single parity, five drives in a single parity, or 10 drives of dual parity. And that will make it so that your interleave size can actually go directly into the exact same value of an NTFS cluster size. And now I'm going to set my interleave size to 256 kilobytes which also happens to be the default value. And since I take number of columns, subtract one, multiply by interleave size, that gets me 512 kilobytes, which is the size of the clusters in NTFS. You can set it up so it's not exactly the same, and having a larger cluster would get you much closer to the max value than having the default cluster size, but making it so it exactly matches will get you the best possible performance. So now I can hit enter here. It's gonna create my new virtual disk, and I can format in PowerShell if I want, or I can just go to disk management, and I can see I have this new volume here. It actually kept the drive letter, but I can go format it again, change my allocation unit size to 512K, click OK, it's going to format it, and then I'm gonna have this same disk here, and I can copy at the same speeds to the drive, because I essentially did the same thing in PowerShell as I did in the GUI, just with a different interface here. I'm to try to explain a little bit of what's going on under the hood here with marbles so kind of the whole parity thing makes a little bit more sense. So in this example I have four data bins or I'm going to just say they're marbles and then I have parity and in this super simple example the parity is equivalent to the total number of marbles. Normally there'd be some other complex math operation that's being used but it takes it so if I add all these marbles up the amount of marbles in the parity is identical. So if I remove one of these bins, I can then take this number of marbles, subtract the total from all the other drives, and know how much this bin would have contained. Now that's relatively simple, the problem is updating it. So if I was, for example, to add one marble to this bin, I also need to update the parity, which means either looking at the parity, subtracting the previous value, and then adding the new value, or I have to read all the values from the other drives, and then add that to the parity. And that's a lot of reads and whites just to update a very small amount of data. Now a more efficient way to do that would be to just write it all out. So if I was to do this, maybe I'd add one to each of these containers at the same time. And since I know I'm adding all of this in memory, I can add the correct amount to parity at the right time. And setting cluster size to a larger value allows this to happen. Because when you have the NTFS cluster size set to four kilobytes, which is super small, this works well on mechanical hard drives where those sectors are normally something around the four kilobyte size. But on the parity, there's these stripes that are significantly bigger. So you're only updating one small part of it and then it has to update the parity at the same time. So for one IO operation, you're doing all reads and writes and a lot of data moving and that will significantly lower performance. The most optimal way to do it is to have it so that your cluster size is equivalent to the total space of each chunk of data which is the interleave size times the amount of data drives. And the way that clusters works in NTFS is the cluster is the smallest amount of data it will work with. So if you make one file, it'll make a cluster for that file, no matter how small it is. But if it's bigger than the cluster size, it will allocate multiple clusters. So then when NTFS updates a file, it updates all of the data drives and it can easily calculate the parity and it doesn't have to read and update and do any interesting things to get it fully updated and that will give you the best performance. So if the trick is this simple to get a massive speed improvement in storage spaces, why didn't I hear about it 10 years ago when storage spaces came out? And in order to figure out a little bit more, I installed some older versions of Windows to see how they'd handle this trick and how the performance would improve. So I first installed Windows Server 2012 R2 with a relatively early implementation of storage spaces. And the write speeds were pretty bad no matter what I did. And then I got Windows Server 2016. And I got significantly better write speeds in 2012 R2, but the main trick of making these massive clusters you can't do in Windows Server 2012 R2 or Windows Server 2016 or earlier versions of Windows 10. And that's because those limit you to setting the max cluster size in NTFS to 64 kilobytes. Whereas newer versions I believe can go up to two megabytes which are much larger and what you want to get the most performance out of storage spaces parity. So if you're using something like Windows Server 2019 or later, 
or in new versions of Windows 10 or Windows 11, you can get the massive performance uptakes doing this. I got some complaints to make with Microsoft now and how they set up storage spaces. When I first saw storage spaces in like 2012 with Windows 8, I thought this is really awesome because the original software rate in Windows 7 and before is pretty bad. And this gives you a lot of the modern features. But it seems like a lot of the implementation has just been bad. From kind of the GUI in Windows 10, the GUI in Windows Server. When I was doing testing for this project, I had some Windows Server configurations that were weird. So I had like two data copies of parity. I don't know why you'd do that. And then it never set the number of cluster size or interleave or even tell me about that, that I was setting it to some weird value. So what's going on here? It feels like the GUI is awful. And even sometimes when I was setting it up in the GUI, I set it all my seven SSDs that I used for testing and it would throw me an error when I tried to make it using the maximum size. Feels kind of bad when I'm kind of using the basic settings in a GUI and it throws an error. Another complaint I have with Microsoft and this code is they seem to like touching stuff under the hood, but they don't really talk about it. There's a lot of IT people and other people who work with storage that want to know what you're tweaking in there because it's nice to know what exactly is happening under the hood because I'm going to be interacting with things. And I'd much rather hear from Microsoft how they're setting it up than have to try to discover it myself. And since it's been out for 10 years now without any like major visible changes, people don't really notice that it's changed a good amount and have just kind of continued the, it's not great. And I think for a lot of uses, it really isn't great because you have to know how to use it to get the most out of it. I spent quite a bit of time running all these tests to figure out all these different situations and a normal person setting up storage for their desktop isn't gonna do that. Hopefully this video showed you some ways to get a little bit more out of storage spaces parity. And if you have a Windows system, I think it's actually now a pretty good way to store a lot of large files. I think with storage spaces now for myself, I can use this parity to store large media files. I feel relatively trusting that it's gonna keep my data and it's reasonably fast. It's just taken 10 years to get to this point, but I'm glad it's a relatively decent software RAID solution in Windows now, which it's been lacking for quite a while. Let me know your experiences you've had with storage spaces in the comments below, and if you've ever tried anything to get better write speeds like this.